tackling a common fall for English learners. Those tricky phrasal verbs like wait on and wait for. How and when do we use these phrasal verbs? Okay, how about give in and give up? What are the differences? Well, we'll be slaying the confusion surrounding six verb pairs that often get misused. So get your metaphorical swords ready, sharpen your pencils, because we are about to have an epic verb bite. Hey everyone, if you're new here, I am Asa and welcome to English Lessons with Asa. The waiting games. Wait on versus wait for. These phrasal verbs might seem similar, but they have distinct meanings. Let's start with a situation many of us face. Waiting at the restaurant. Do you wait on the waiter to take your order? Or you wait for the waiter to take your order? Of course, you wait for the waiter to take your order. We wait for something or someone to arrive. Wait on, however, means to serve someone, like a waiter attending to customers. The waitress waited on us promptly and refilled our drinks. So, at the restaurant, you wait for the waiter to take your order. And the waiter waits on you, that is, he or she serves you or attends to you. Let's look at some examples. I am waiting for the bus to come. I'm waiting for something to arrive. So I use the phrasal verb wait for. I am waiting for the bus to come. We are waiting for the confirmation on the project. She waited on her ugly grandmother ensuring she's comfortable. Notice how I pronounced the word comfortable, not comfortable, comfortable. She waited on tables. We usually hear this in American movies. It simply means she served meals as a job to earn an extra money. So you see the difference? One is about expecting and the other is about serving. Wait for is when you're expecting someone or something to arrive. And wait on is about serving or attending to people. And moving on, we have come off and come on. Come off actually comes with different meanings. It could mean to become detached. It could also mean to succeed or to happen. It could also mean to appear in a certain way. Examples. The paint is coming off the wall. The event came off without a hitch. He came off as very confident during the interview. But in this context, we focus more on the second meaning, which is to succeed or to happen, because that's where the confusion lies. Students usually say the event came on beautifully, or the event came on without a hit. Both sentences are wrong. Instead, you should say the event came off without a hitch, or the event came off beautifully. This simply means the event happened or succeeded beautifully or without a hitch. Come on, on the other hand, is used to encourage someone or to indicate the start of something. Come on, you can do it. <laughs> the lights come on automatically at dusk. Always remember, come on is more about starting or edging, whereas come off means to happen or to succeed. Now. Let's tackle back off, back down, and back out. Very confusing phrasal verbs, or let me say often misused phrasal verbs. Back off means to retreat, step away, or to withdraw, usually from a confrontation. For example, he told the aggressive person to back off, meaning he told the aggressive person to step away or to withdraw. He told the dog to back off. She decided to back off from the argument. Back down means to withdraw a claim or to concede defeat. He decided to back down from the argument. He probably noticed he was at fault, so he conceded defeat. He backed down from the argument. Her breath came in short gasp, but she decided to not back down. 
Back out means to withdraw completely from an agreement or a commitment. I decided to back out of the marathon due to an injury. I withdrew completely from the marathon due to an injury. He backed out of the deal at the last minute. They backed out of the project due to funding issues. Now, let's look at how we can use these phrasal verbs, all three, in one context. Let's say you're in a negotiation and things get heated up. How do you manage the situation? We say things get heated up when a situation becomes increasingly intense and difficult to manage. Now, we have three options. Let's look at them. One, you back off the pressure and try a more conciliatory approach. Meaning, you step away and try a different approach. Two, you back down from your demands entirely. This means you concede defeat and accept the opponent's demands. And three, you back out from the negotiation altogether. This means you withdraw completely from the negotiation or the agreement altogether. This is quite an extreme option, but... You have to choose one. You have only three options. Oh, so remember, back off is about retreating or stepping away. Back down is about conceding. And back out is about withdrawing completely from an agreement or a commitment. Give in and give up. These two phrasal verbs have very simple meanings, but often confused and misused. Give in means to yield to pressure or to concede. She finally gave in to her kids' demands for a puppy. Her kids pressured her for a puppy and she yielded. After hours of negotiation, he gave in. Don't give in to peer pressure and try that dangerous stunt. Give up means to stop trying. To abandon something after trying, often due to difficulty. For examples, don't give up on your dreams. Don't stop trying simply because you encounter difficulties here and there. Do not give up on your dreams. He gave up smoking last year. I eventually gave up on trying to fix the broken gadget. Let's say you're working on a difficult task, but you feel a bit discouraged. What happens? You either give in to the pressure to quit or you give up after putting in a good effort so the difference is give in is about yielding and give up is about quitting next we have hold off and put off now imagine you're planning a trip abroad how do you handle booking flights one you hold off booking flights until you get a visa two you keep putting off booking flights and miss out on deals Now, the difference between these two sentences with the first one, you hold off booking flights until you get a visa, is simply for a reason. You are holding off due to a reason. You want to get a visa before you book the flight. And with the second one, you putting off booking flights is due to lack of agency. It's not that agent. It's not that important, possibly. So you just keep putting it off. We hold off doing something because of a specific reason, often temporary. And we put off doing something generally due to lack of agency or the desire to avoid it. Let's differentiate with more examples. Let's hold off on ordering a dessert until we see the bill. This is temporary. So what do we do? We hold off. I keep putting off going to the dentist, but I really should make an appointment. The dentist appointment may not be urgent or I'm probably avoiding going to the dentist because it's quite an uncomfortable encounter. The coach told the team to hold off celebrating until the final whistle. We had to put off our vacation due to the pandemic. Finally, let's tackle those pesky forms. So, do you fill out an application form with your details or... Do you fill in the missing words in a crossword puzzle? They are both correct. Fill out means to complete a form or a document. Examples. Please fill out this application form. She filled out the questionnaire. 
Fill in, on the other hand, means to complete by adding information or to substitute for someone. Examples. Can you fill in the blanks? She will fill in for the manager while he's away. In a nutshell, fill out is used for completing forms, while fill in can be for adding information or substituting. That brings us to the end of today's lesson. Clear explanations and examples of commonly misused phrasal verbs in English. Understanding the differences will help you speak and write English more accurately. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more English lessons and hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. Thank you so much for watching and happy learning. Bye-bye.